Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great fair question, and that is how do you sustain healing and healthy relationships after you've been through a number of um, flawed relationships? Per perhaps you found yourself really surrounded by people who didn't always have your best interest in mind or were not able to commit. They were not able to be trustworthy for you. You weren't able to go the distance. And you are feeling that it's very difficult to sort of find or create new relationships. You know, people might be hitting a real um, sort of oasis in their life um, where they're trying to understand and digest and process what they have gone through. And they don't want to perpetuate the wounds or perpetuate the unhappiness where they feel once again that they've got the short end of the stick, that they've been taken advantage of. Things of this nature are very unsettling um, experiences and feelings. So how do you really heal for good? <clears throat> Number one, I would say, is that of detachment. Um, so all the energy that you were giving to try to help this narcissist or help this psychopath to be supportive. Um, you know, all the giving away of your strength or your power to this individual um, oftentimes constitutes a, a negative behavioral habit or a negative emotional habit. Constantly um, becoming, you know, or feeling self deprecating. Um, and that anything else other than being self deprecating is going to throw you off balance or does not feel right. So number one, I would say in <clears throat> in healing is understanding a, a new sort of balance for yourself, emotional balance, uh, not giving so much of your power away, not giving of yourself, you know, being overly um, obligated or overly um, just over obligation to helping others to the deference of yourself. And, you know, if you've been in this sort of dynamic for a while, it then becomes very difficult to receive, very difficult to receive compliments, very difficult to receive um, positive um, expressions oftentimes, because it does, it's not an energetic match to how you've been treated and then therefore how you have felt. So it feels uncomfortable. Um, it feels unsustainable. So people then, you know, will shy away or be afraid of relationships with others because they're afraid that they're going to be hurt again, that it's going to be a similar pattern. Um, so this will then inhibit people from feeling happy, from being able to communicate with their own sense of protection through um, protection of their boundaries and their standards. They don't quite have the firm legs yet. They have sort of emotional sea legs. And so it might feel that, th you know, things are very slow to change, slow to heal. So how do you heal for good? Well, number one, realizing that all of the um, negative sort of put downs are there oftentimes to keep people silent or to keep people from growing or expressing the truth or challenging them. So it creates a lot of this sort of untreaded territory or what you might consider a frontier or an emotional frontier for you. And so realizing that, that this is when the things get good. Once you have decided that you're no longer going to accept being treated with disrespect, being, you know, um, lack of eye contact, um, the imbalance of communication, um, and you've, you've made a, a firm commitment to say, I no longer I, I don't want that for me to be to become that, but I no longer am going to tolerate relationships where there this is already a given play or a given dynamic where you have to sort of change your I am in the midst of the relationship. Um, so to heal for good, you really do need to understand what self-love and self-care means. And a lot of people, oh, peace and harmony, I'm afraid I'm going to become the narcissist. I'm going, I'm afraid, you know, I'm, I, 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 I'm uncomfortable with this. I feel that this is too superficial. This is not, um, you know, a struggle. So their success would contradict their sense of struggle, which is sometimes all that people know. Um, they've been in a series or multi-generational series of, of being taken advantage of, of not being heard or represented, uh, not feeling acknowledged. So 
they might find that they then are pursuing these sort of situations <clears throat> where they can then be f fulfilled in the bigger picture. You know, so you have to look at and enlarge your scope, enlarge your panorama um, of where you want to go. And oftentimes you have to have a sense of self-reliance and autonomy and, you know, conviction within self that will be able to enforce the boundaries and standards. That's why I emphasize the recovery date where you put, you know, your emotional legs on and you take yourself out for, you know, about two hours where it's on your own, undisturbed, and you're really looking at treating yourself fairly and not feeling like the negative I am that had been imprinted or conditioned or programmed into you by people who were in the midst of taking advantage of <clears throat> or underrepresenting you in a relationship. And, and, and so really understanding that the security and the serenity is within you. It is within a very sacred place. Some call it the, you know, the um, solar plexus. You know, that's oftentimes where the I am is, needs to be spoken from. And it's not spoken from here. It's spoken from in your, your gut. I am. So if you're used to, you know, I am and it's all being in this cerebral you know, you need, it, it has to be felt in a strength that is felt, a human right that is felt and experienced. And to know that <clears throat> you don't have to put up or tolerate, uh, that you can reinvigorate a, a sense of I am that is based on a, a positive, and not only just a positive, but that of abundance, that of growth, that of knowing that dreams can't come true. Here comes my nose again. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> it is the hay fever time of year once again. So you who have been with me through the spring and summer know that I have the hay fever and I, I'm not taking any medication for it. So excuse me. <clears throat> but realize oftentimes now that you have to be declarative. You have to be deliberate. You have to be decisive. You have to be able to call some shots, begin to become a leader unto yourself in opening up the panorama of new relationships. Um, knowing the cause that has created this desire is that because you are independent and you are whole and strong in and of yourself and that you can govern yourself when situations come up. In other words, you've learned how to cope. This unequivocally is a skill. This unequivocally needs to be repeated. Excuse me, once again, I am so sorry. <clears throat> so this needs to be rehearsed and rememorized and felt and experienced. So maybe you need to confront some situations. You might need to get used to confronting people. You might you need to get used to saying no um, and meaning it and holding your ground. You know, you might need to be able to catch things when people are being disrespectful and you're acknowledging that the disrespect is within them, you are not triggering the disrespect. Oftentimes it is within the source, you know, so you have to remember your source. And is someone looking to get a leg up on you? Is someone looking to deceive or um, deflate you? Is someone looking to diminish and minimize you for an agenda, for a reason? you know, what could be their payoff? And so you have to understand, you know, and, and have this discussion internally with an internal dialogue or within the privacy of these videos so you can get a handle, you can get a firm understanding of what, you know, being violated, being lied to, and being in a pathological um, relationship feels like con contrasting to what a healthy relationship feels like. So you'll have some experience with the healthy. Um, and this should become really a, a priority for you. Um, it should be a priority. Instead of feeling that you're just attracting and going to the same places, you might need to change it up a bit. Um, you might need to change up, you know, how you present yourself to the world. You know, are you, are you still presenting yourself as a victim, um, unconsciously or consciously? You know, are, are you giving, is that the message, is that the vibe that you're sending out? 
Um, if so, then you need to recalibrate your energy and look at your I am and that internal dialogue and how you're holding and carrying yourself, you know, um, and you need to then reevaluate that and then be, um, you might need to work on being at ease, being at peace, being listened to, um, being in the presence of another, you know, and not feeling that they're going to take advantage. You might need to work on this on your recovery dates, but then you'll know <clears throat> that you're consistently working on it. And then eventually the skill and the tools will grow. You'll have this in your toolkit. You'll have this um, understood in the way that you discuss and relate to others and then who you attract and eventually who you might date or work with, um, who, where you might move to. I mean, this can be a real life changer and you might need to actually change your, a little bit of your lifestyle into that of involving more, more of self-care, more of respecting your limitations rather than them having or being defined as you are too limited. Oftentimes for the narcissist, if you can't just give to them profusely, you know, then you're, you get on their bad side. You are second or third rung supply. Um, so you have to realize that, you know, maybe you don't want to be in the lower, you, you don't want to continue that, you know, what I call sort of um, carrying the baton. You might not, not want to carry that into your personal life, that disempowerment. So you have to have um, some experience with being empowered, having knowledge, um, having um, uh, compliments, having things that are um, important to you um, and go well so that you're able to be positioned and experience success. Sorry, my uh, cool. It is so very hot here in the Peace and Harmony studios. Um, I need a hat just to kind of keep the cool. Um, so thank you for bearing with me and the style uh, change up as we go through here um, and we are not wearing the jackets. Um, it is just too hot in the studio. <laughs> Love it, right? Um, I, you know, you, you can't be perfect on these things. Um, so uh, I would just say, number one is, you know, re, really uh, evaluate and hold space for yourself, especially when it comes to self-care. You know, holding your space, um, um, and to get a healthy sense of self takes some checking in and, and noticing how you feel. And when you get agitated, when you get shaky, um, you know, and looking at how you've been treating yourself, has your diet been balanced? Has your, have your emotions been, you know, through all these mood swings or are they balanced? Are you still, you know, consuming um, too much from an egoic level rather than a, um, a place of, self-esteem and self-evaluation so that you don't have to consume as much to feel you know the presence of who you are and living in your life purpose so you can sort of be able to then back off from the negative consumption um, you know you might be numbing yourself out with hours of television um, and you're not going places reading um, getting fresh air sunlight things of this nature that you need to feel good so be willing to, you know, keep yourself in check and being able to experiment a little bit with what makes you happy and where you can then engage in and experiment with healthy relationships rather than feeling overwhelmed, anxious, and as if you can't manage and enforce what happens when you meet somebody and if they go out of line, you know, can you back them down? Can you back off? And you can make a determination then that you don't want to go for, um, this type of relationship where you're being taken advantage of or minimized and then you can deflect it you'll no longer be attracting those types of relationships no no also those will no longer feel like attractive or desirable <clears throat> relationships you'll understand that there are other um, relationships where the you know the energy is better you know there's happiness there is not um, a, a need to control, a need to over influence, a need to manipulate or a need to outsmart or, you know, look this way and then look the other way. And then next thing you know, they've just done something underneath your nose that, you know, you find out about and then expose later on. Um, very important that you realize that this, you know, when you're sort of missing 
the, the right perspective. You can then see it and address it and confront it without feeling that you're going off the deep end or you're not just going off the shallow end either, that you are balanced and you've got sort of substantiation for how you feel and that then you'll understand that you are not, you know, you are not going crazy, you are not um, perpetually uh, uh, shameful, you are not permanently flawed, very much to the opposite. You are a live, living, breathing, caring, sentient human being who is now be beginning to go out of their, their comfort zone and venture out a little bit so you can meet and engage with other people and other types of people and relationships that aren't based perhaps on the same um, level. It's going to have a different energy perhaps than the other relationships that you were in before. And that is okay. That should be welcome. That's a sign of your growth. This is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out, peace be with you, and have a beautiful day. Thank you for your viewership.